will Facebook behave differently once there are uh, different interests at stake, once it's publicly listed, presumably facing different commercial imperatives and commercial trade-offs? Possible. I mean, we see Google having to make hard decisions about China, about other parts of the world. Google, of course, we heard that word so often in Egypt because of Wael Honim and this idea that these companies are, again, part of the connective tissue of our societies. And that's going to work in many different ways. But when they have to be, by their own stockholders' imperatives, part of the landscape, they're going to have to start making tough decisions between the social good and the governmental risk and the reputational risk that they face. What, what, what strikes me is that the, the case of, um, well, you, you mentioned like the, the, the Arabs, the Arab people, the Arab culture, mm. like this and that. Um, my impression is that through this, the, the revolutions that are going on in the Arab world at the moment, let's say the social media have revived pan-Arabism. Suddenly people, people care about what's going on in the other countries. Because before, people in the Arab world, they were talking a lot about, about the fate of the Palestinians, but in fact, it was stirring up their minds, but in fact, they didn't do anything about it. Now we see that they really con they're really concerned about what's going on in the neighboring countries. Is that also an effect of Facebook? Well, the one thing uh, that I came out of this with, and it, it relates to what's happening in Iran and what's happening everywhere else, is that when this, this dust all settles, I think people are going to realize that uh, you know, either they're Egyptians or Israelis or Iranians or whatever, that people don't actually have problems with people. It's that the governments have problems with each other. And uh, we're taking out the governments one by one. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll start having governments that actually represent the people. And then suddenly we'll actually have dialogue and actually we'll get out of the rut we've been in for the past 50 years. Where we, instead of actually having the people actually talking with each other, we have the dear leader figure and he decides what the country is doing and what our beliefs are. There isn't actually pan-Arabism per se. There is pride, you know, there is, we feel proud of every other nation that actually does it because you, you finally see the individual that you have always discounted, the person that you have always stereotyped as whatever, uh, stupid, passive. afraid, passive, whatever, like actually rise up and do it, you know, and God bless them all for it. I disagree a little bit with you. Mm -hmm. well, again, you will, uh, no, no, will not like that I always attack. I mean, uh, I don't believe that there is uh, even since the, the Arabic history, there is an Arab unity. And nobody no said there is. No, I, I'm, telling, ah. I'm trying to come to your point. Ah. Okay. You, I mean, you said, I think you said that it's uh, the problem of governments, not people, yeah? This no, no, I said, you said there is pan-Arabism. And I said it's not correct to use the term pan-Arabism. Yeah. Because you're actually, because the people so in you the U.S. You feel concerned and with people, what's going on in the other no, Arab countries. Yeah, yeah, not only that, but everywhere else. Iran isn't Arab. I care about the Iranian people taking down the regime yeah. and being free. You know, Israelis aren't Arabs, but if Israelis and Palestinians manage to bring down the government and create a one-state solution, good on them. Yeah, but this is the Arabic schizophrenia. How so? I'll tell you what. I mean, unfortunately, we Arab always unite when there is a massacre, but they are divided when there is a football or uh, huh. whatever. This is for the truth. We shouldn't hide it. I mean, always, unfortunately, in the uh, uh, dramatic situations, Arab are united. Maybe we're when united there is when it's significant. No, How only, about that? But football if isn't that significant. Why? <laughs> well, let's, uh, sorry guys, that's uh, a different, let's not go, no, no. To, different let's not go to the no, Al-Ahli Zamalek okay, okay, case not, here. Not even like football, not even football, Star Academy. <laughs> then, then what I this want is, to say this is the level of discourse no we had before. Now we can actually talk about things that matter racism, and we should actually the racism, embrace that. The racism, just a week ago, you know, I write a, a, a weekly article on our website. One week ago I was talking about this, that the racism in Arabs or between Arabs, it's, it's much more in the West against Arabs. I mean, the Arabs against themselves. They're very racist against themselves. Against each other, you mean? Against each yeah. other, okay? The one from the city is racist against the man from okay. the village. The one from this, uh, you know, tribe is against the other man. You should have been in Tahrir, man. Huh? You should have been in Tahrir. What that is? Just we have resolved all of this. Just for a few days. We have resolved all of this. In a moment, yeah. in a moment of, of, just of, of Exactly. It's drama. very, it's for the time being. Okay. And when you finish, Ahli against Zamalik. 
What actually, are we actually, 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 starts you know pursuing a political agenda i think please correct me if uh, please don't correct me if i'm wrong okay <laughs> <laughs> so don't i think i think the facebook uh, as a business model uh, will have serious problems in the future for sure why i think the fact that uh, wael ghunaym because he was working for google i don't know but i think that uh, he was told that he should really uh, give the credit to facebook and not to google Why? Because after the revolution or the transformation in Egypt or in, uh, for instance, in, in, in Tunisia, people will develop a certain, let's say, rapport, si tu, uh, uh, relationship to Facebook. Because Facebook is based on, 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 on data, on, on file, on my, inf my personal information. If I will be aware that they are uh, making money out of my personal information, I will deactivate my account. An image of purity and neutrality is absolutely essential to the, to the survival of a, of a, a social media system. Facebook and Google operate based on ad platforms. Ad platforms based on social information and segmentation of the people who are using their accounts. Twitter is going to join that bandwagon anyway. You know, The reality of it is Facebook was already losing members to Twitter. And then someone else will come up with something else and they're losing Google. members to that. Google. Whatever. Yeah. You know, Orkut, whatever, yeah. like everything. And, and, and that's the beautiful thing about it. I mean, you know, there used to be a time in which uh, people, everybody had a MySpace account. And if, you know, nobody will admit to this now. Exactly. It's like admitting to listen to the Spice Girls. Yes. You know, there are 10 million <laughs> records sold and nobody will own up to owning one of them. So, you know, I really, I don't think that's going to be the issue. I think, fine, sell it. You know, other people can invest in it. It's a business model. Eventually, some people will get tired of it, not because of the ads, but mm. mostly because of the invites and the application and werewolf versus zombie and the Farmville. There is like, you know, uh, the Farmville culture. The moment, the moment for us watching all of these revolutions is not the moment we see the Facebook page. It's the moment we see someone willing to run into a line of machine guns, into a line of clubs, There's a willingness of the human spirit to walk into that situation, regardless of the danger, and say what you have to say. For me, that's the critical moment. And we've seen it in many countries. You can't replicate it, you can't digitize it, and you often can't plan it. Uh, it's something that comes to you when you're standing in the street and you know that death is on the other side of the road and you go anyway.